And all of a sudden there was a new form. The new space age form. Brought to you by undergravity. Space age. Adam Bomb and the mastermind after cash. Two of the few and danger funk doctors left. And you are not tuned in to the fuckiest show on earth, nigga. That space age form. Uncut space age bomb Coming to you live from the space mothership, nigga Five million kilowatts of space age bomb For your motherfucking trunk Yo. Now you can funk with this or you can funk with that If funk was a green piece of paper, we are have it by the stacks If funk was a fifth, I'd be laying on my Welcome to the show, baby Happy to be here Yeah so um, let's start at the beginning, man. What you know? Where you grew up at, man? What city? What area, man? Uh, I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. Uh, grew up on the north side of Houston. Uh, little time in Greens Point, and then we moved away for a little bit. Moved back to the stead, and that's pretty much where I've been since then, on that side of town. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So what? You know, like you grew up in what decade? I grew up in the 90s. In the uh, 90s? Yeah, 90s Greens Point. Uh, spent a little time Lincoln, Lincoln Green East, and then we moved to Northboro. To those that know, you know how it was over there. And, you know, kind of started messing with music around the age of 9 or 10. Kind of knew I had a little flow. You know, used to always freestyle for family, friends. My uncle used to make me freestyle for his partners and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, just kind of grew into one of them things, man, where it's like, you know, when you always kind of got it, you know? Yeah, man. So how was it, you know, how was it growing up over there? Man, it was, you know, it was different, obviously. But, yeah, it was different, you know what I'm saying? But thankfully for me, you know, I had I had family surrounding me, you know, so, and I always made the right decisions. So it, it was tough on the north. It, it was crazy over there, you know. We didn't seen it documented and, you know, boys stealing cars and, and jacking and all that stuff, the guns, point shit, you know. I stayed pretty much walking distance from Greens Point Mall, so, but, you know. Yeah. Man, who is some, you know, some famous f famous rappers and shit from out there that we, you know, that the people might know that's from where you from? Uh, from, from Greens Point? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I know Mag knows from, definitely from Greens Point, yeah. uh, from Switcher House. Have you done any production for him, any of them? Uh, nah, man. I actually had, uh, yeah, I actually had. Uh, growing up, I had a feature from Fifty Fifty Twin. We had a tape. This probably like mid two thousands. You know, we had a single with Magno. You know, I actually, uh, man, first beat I did ever. I actually did was uh, on Magno's new print. So, you know, at an early age, you know, we collabed. I had a, a mixtape that was chopped and screwed by OG Ron C when we was. We was young, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, we didn't collab with, with quite a few of the people around there. There's still some I want to work with, some from the South, too, definitely. Yeah. Why you came up with George Young for your name? For your all right, that's name. a great question. So, all right, so at the time, man, I had a rap name that was versatile. That what was, was my that was my rap name when y'all met me. glad you changed that shit. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> and, and it, it was versatile. And so I spelled it with V-E-R-E-S-E. Like, I, it's verse and tile. And at that time, they had a show on, uh, like, the WB with Sticky Fingers. Was It was, like, Platinum or some shit like that. It was, like, a rap show. It was, like, reality. It was, like, the first power. You know what I'm saying? And that nigga name was Versus on it. And I was like, man, I got to change this bullshit. And at the time, they had we had David Banner. We had Kanye West. Like, niggas was moving away from, like, stage names to, like, names that sounded like real names. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man. I need me a real name, you know what I'm saying? And, but I'm like, I wanted to keep it authentic, so I was like, man, I, I got to be able to keep the George. So at the time, Jay-Z used to say Young a lot in his songs. And then, of course, I was going to change my rap name to Young Jizzle, which would have been oh, no. terrible. And then Jeezy come out, so I'm like, all right, I can't do that. So... Uh, <laughs> So young then, Jizzle, man. So, let's, let's stop right there on that young. Yeah, Jizzle. so, so I was like, well, I can't do, I don't want to be young George, like, cause niggas was doing little and young and all this other Boston shit. Boston George. Yeah, so, but 
Wait, so the movie Blow came out. And uh, one day I was watching that shit in my dorm at PV, and I was listening to the opening movie. He said, my name is George Young. Of course, his is spelled J-U-N-G. So I was like, you know, with that Young, that Young young just sounded tight to me because Hove used to say it a lot. It's Young, you know, all that other shit. So I was like, you know what? Instead of trying to be, because I don't want people to think I'm trying to be the, the actual drug dealer because that's not my persona of my music. I was like, let me just make it young, and it'll sound like a real fucking name. And that's where I get my beat tag from, and that's how George Young was born. Man, it's, it's crazy how the nigga Jay-Z started saying young when he got old. Yeah. <laughs> that nigga wasn't he was saying like, that. Yeah. He wasn't saying it when he was young. young. Yeah, nah, he wasn't no. saying that shit till he, he was about 33. He wasn't saying it Sophie. Nah. <laughs> but yeah, that's how George Young, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? George, how did you start producing, bro? I started producing. All right, so... I used to, uh, one of my best friends in high school is from Third Ward. So um, we used to be at his crib a lot, and he had an aunt that stayed uh, basically off of Dowling. So we used to go to her house a lot, and they had just bought a computer from, like, one of their neighbors. And so we chilling in there, and I used to draw a lot. I'd be on, like, WordPad and, and uh, that art shit on, on Microsoft or whatever. So they had this program. I didn't know what it was. I just seen, like, a strawberry or orange strawberry. Like what the fuck is this? A so strawberry. Yeah, I, that's what Fruity Loops logo is, whatever the fuck it is. So, um, I clicked it open, and I started clicking around. I'm like, oh, this a beat, this a beat program. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. I I go over there every time we go over there. I might spend thirty minutes on that whole like everybody else in the living room. I go straight to the kitchen, fucking around, and it was it was the demo version, so you couldn't save beats. You know what I'm saying? So I had to render. The MP3 out, I make little whack ass beats, you know what I'm saying? But that's where I learned how to produce from just them little 30 minutes, probably twice a from month. From the Fruity Loops demo. A Fruity Loops demo on my partner's aunt's computer. Man, and then, ass. And yeah, and then. Do you believe in destiny or do you believe you create your own destiny? Because that just sounded like, you know. Man, you know what? I, be I believe in a, a combination of both. I don't, I don't want to sound like a cop out, but I believe. You gonna make you gonna make that shit happen, and it's written for you when you go to make it happen. So in other words, like some shit just gonna happen, bro. Like I was meant to like be in that house and get on. Even if I wouldn't have been on that computer, I was gonna find some computer with music on it. That's like right. it, it was gonna happen some type of way, but that just happened to be the way that it happened. You know what I'm saying? So that I did that, and then I was fortunate. My mom, greatest mama ever, got me a laptop, uh, a Dell. Man, you know what I'm saying? Ass Dale, weak bro. ass Dell, but at the time, bro, this is like a fifteen hundred dollar laptop that my mom got me for Christmas. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that she bought that. I got Fruity Loops, bro, on there. And back then, you know, downloading stuff took forever. So getting drum packs and stuff, we doing this with fifty six K modem. Man. You know what I'm saying? So I just collected all them sounds and just started putting it down. And and one of the first beats I did, probably one of the fourth beat I did. Uh, the homie Joker man was telling me, "Were well, you doing beats now with Sample Sesame Street?" I sampled Sesame Street and brought him the beat, and he was like, "Man, this is tight." He was like, "We could use this." So he took me to I don't know if it was Slim Studio, but he took me to a studio and I worked with the producer Kojak, right. and basically like Kojak let me use his MPC to recreate some of it, and my first beat ended up on Magno's mixtape, The New Print. Shout out to Kojak, man. Yeah, shout out to Kojak. Man, that's dope. Yeah. Man. And so then what? Then what happened, George? I mean, then, you know, I went to PV. You know what I'm saying? I linked up. I got a homie out there. But you, uh, you was building your craft, you know? Yeah, man. Me and two producers, uh, me and my dog, uh, Blue, he a uh, producer out of Dallas. He done produced for Kendrick Lamar, Mag Miller, Schoolboy Q, one of my best friends I met at PV. Him and then... Uh, Blake Dozier from Stunt Dozier that was with uh, Shit Factory, you know what I'm saying? And with them two, man, we just make making beats and comparing them, and I just got my craft up, and that's that's really where I became the producer I am today from the groundwork I was putting in back then at PV in the dorm. Man, yeah. So you was in the, you was in the dorm, yeah, with the Fruity Loops on the Dell. On the on the Dell, 
putting with in the little work. white speaker putting in work every day, bro. You had one speaker? Yeah, one speaker. You come up off of one speaker, man. <laughs> That's what I'm It was like a little hospital speaker or some shit like that, but it had a subwoofer. That's what the fuck. Yeah. That's real, man. You come from the... <laughs> you get it from the soil, man. Yeah, okay. Like my nigga <laughs> Soil. You get it from the soil, man. Yeah. Soil, that's, man. That's live, man. Yeah. I'm fucking with that, man. Well, you know, so you come up off of that, man, and then you come out of PV, man, with the connections. You know, you met, you know, you met, who you met out there? Um, well, I I was in Primetime Click. Prime when time the when the row had talk to me about prime. What is prime time? Prime click? time click was a collection of, of, of artists and people from different parts of Texas. Yeah. So you had the row that was like the main cat. The row, shout out to the shout out to the row music man. You had uh, my boy DJ Merck who was a DJ. My boy Cash Capone, Teddy B, uh, my boy Norm T, my boy Q Smith who uh who co-produced uh, the song that would be Holly Berry. And then we actually had Superstar in there that was the guy that made the song Holly Berry originally before it was sold to Hurricane Chris. Man. So uh, you had, we was doing that, the road drop ice cream paint job and uh, walk that walk while I was out there. I was in both videos. Um, and at that time, I actually did a little production I was sending out to my boy Blue in, uh, in Cali. And he was producing for Kendrick Lamar and Schoolboy Q. Huh. And I actually did a beat for Al so. Uh, back in the gap, and oh, yeah? it's like yeah, on one of his old tapes with a Lori Joe on it, you know what I'm saying? So are you up on that shit, man? I fuck with that app so man. Yeah, yeah. I never, I never got to meet them cats, but you know what I'm saying. You go, you go to this tape, and my tag is on there. So uh, yeah, I got to check that out, man. Let yeah. people know where they can get that, man. Man, you can find out. It's, I think it's long term. Uh, the song is called Long Term, yeah. and it's on like his first, I think, long term mentality or something like that, That's featuring the Lori Joe. Yeah. That's dope, so, man. Yeah, man. Putting in work, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's real, man. 